As always, if you haven't done so yet, make sure that you pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. We are asked to calculate the energy of each of the following photons in kilojoules per mole. Very important to take note here that we need this in kilojoules per mole. So the first piece of information given in part A is that the frequency of the photon is 5.98 times 10 to the 19th inverse seconds. It's important to note that this V looking letter is the frequency of the photon. And there is a nice and easy calculation to determine the energy of the photon if we know the frequency. And to get that, we note that the energy of the photon is equal to a constant known as Planck's constant multiplied by the frequency. Now as just noted the constant h is called Planck's constant and we can see here that it has a value of 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. Notice that's a joule multiplied by a second. So that's the value that we're going to be plugging in for h and then for the frequency we have the given value on the side right here. So let's go ahead and plug in those two numbers. Now notice when we multiply we're going to end up with seconds to the positive one. We can even make a little note here that there's a positive one right there. And that's going to multiply by seconds to the minus one. In essence, those will actually cancel each other out, leaving us with just joules. So we can pick up our calculators and punch this in. We should get 3.962 times 10 to the minus 14. And we'll notice that's what, what is left is just joules. But that's not the answer because the question wants kilojoules per mole of photons. This is only joules per single photon. This is not a mole of photons. This is just one photon. So we actually have to do a little bit of a conversion here. So let's come over here because we're going to have to set up a couple of conversion factors. Let's rewrite the energy that we just calculated. This would be joules. If you'd like to, you can write this all over one photon. That would be an equivalent form of writing out joules per photon. And we're going to multiply by a couple of conversion factors. Now, we want the joules to turn into uh, kilojoules here. Now, we recall from earlier chapters that one kilojoule is equivalent to 10 to the third joules. And you'll notice the way that we set this up is so that the joules are diagonally oriented, and that allows them to cancel each other out, leaving us with kilojoules. We need to now change the photons into a mole of photons. We recall that one mole of any quantity is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of that quantity. So for instance, if we situate photons in the numerator here, and then mole of photons in the denominator, we would have one mole of photons is equivalent to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Notice again the way that we set this up is so that the photons in the denominator here and the photons in the numerator there would cancel out. And if you look very carefully, you would be left indeed with kilojoules per mole of photons. So now we can pick up our calculators and see what our result is. When we punch this in, we get a rather large number. It looks like this. And you could probably actually type that into your online homework system and get the correct answer. So that would indeed be kilojoules per mole. It is more convenient to notice that if you move this decimal one, two, three, four, five, six, seven places to the left, you would end up with a 2.38. But then to move the decimal place back to where it should be, you multiply by 10 to the power of 7. So that would be an equivalent way of writing the answer. Part B is extremely similar. They've just given us a different value for the frequency. So we'll go through this a little more quickly. Again, the energy of one photon would equal Planck's constant multiplied by the given frequency. We'll plug in the numbers. Recall that when we multiply them, the seconds and the inverse seconds will cancel each other out. 
This gives us 7.95 times 10 to the minus 28 joules. Let's set up the conversion to get that into kilojoules per mole. Remember, this is joules per one photon. So we're going to need to convert that in the exact same way we just did. We can put this joules over one photon. As before, one kilojoule is 10 to the third joules. And then one mole of photons is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd photons. And the way that we've situated the units allows us to cancel joules. It allows us to cancel photons. And that will leave us with kilojoules per mole of photons. So when we punch this into our calculators, we get 4.79 times 10 to the minus 7 kilojoules per mole of photons. And that would be the correct answer to part B. Okay, so now on to part C. This time they're giving us a different starting value. It's no longer a frequency. This Greek letter lambda represents the wavelength of the photon. We'll still ultimately use the equation E equals Planck's constant times frequency, but of course we're going to need to get the frequency in order to proceed. Now it turns out that the frequency of a photon is equal to the speed of light divided by the wavelength of that photon. The speed of light has a constant value of approximately 3 times 10 to the eighth meters per second, and we'll divide that by the given wavelength of 265 meters. When we calculate that, we see that the frequency is 1.13 times 10 to the power of 6. The meters would cancel, leaving us with inverse seconds. So now we can come back and calculate the energy of a single photon. And when we do that, we get roughly 7.50 times 10 to the minus 28 joules per photon. And at this stage, why don't we just go ahead and set up the conversion right here. So we'll put this over one photon, and then we'll set up the same conversion factors. The joules are going to cancel. Photons are going to cancel. This leaves us with kilojoules per mole of photons. And our final answer for part C is 4.52 times 10 to the minus 7 kilojoules per mole of photons.